full moon matinee. I'm your host, the detective, conducting investigations into the finest crime dramas and film noir from the golden age of Hollywood. Tonight's picture is from 1953, The Hitchhiker, starring Edmund O'Brien, Frank Lovejoy, and William Tallman, and is directed by Ida Lupino, whom we'll talk about a little later. Now, tonight's picture has two very unusual elements for a noir. One is that it's set in the desert scapes of the American Southwest and Mexico, uh, very isolated rural locations. You know, these aren't the cityscapes of major cities uh, that we see in most noirs. The other is that and this is very unusual for a noir, in tonight's picture, there is no femme fatale. All of the major characters are men. Now, in 1998, tonight's picture, The Hitchhiker, was voted into the National Film Registry, which is an award for culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant films by the United States Library of Congress. And in October of that year, it was shown at the American Film Institute in Washington, D.C. as part of a celebration of film noir. So, from 1953, The Hitchhiker. Let's roll the picture.
next intersection. Why don't you turn south? Chapel Mountains are east. Oh, they were the last time we headed that way. Who needs the mountains? Why don't we go to San Felipe? Nothing to do in San Felipe but fish. Well, that was the idea, wasn't it? Yeah, I guess so. Well, we might just pick up a drink in Mexicali. Remember Flora Bell at the Alhambra Club? Yeah. She's probably dead by now. That was a long time ago. Yeah. Poor old Flora Bell. Well, there's no harm in drinking a toast to her. Okay. You know, except for the war, this is the first time I've been away from Morty and the kids. You want to turn back? No, no, no. We've come this far. <sighs> Mexicali's beginning to sound good. Bienvenidos a México. Muchachos, ¿quieren divertirse? This is the place, señor. Come right in. Juanita is just starting her famous fan dance. You are just in time. Well, might as well take a look. Hey, Gil. Gil? Mm. Sorry, friend, no sin. Oh, well. San Felipe, here we come. We're going to San Felipe. You can pick up some gas there, hit you right back. Wait not that long? Yeah. You'll let me see right front and keep driving sure I'm Emmett Myers do what I tell you and don't make no fast moves or a lot of dead heroes back there get nervous from now on while you're driving keep both hands high on that wheel and you keep one hand along the top of this seat the other hand high on that window all right. Now turn off the next side road we come to. Pull up. Open the glove compartment. What's the box? Cartridges, 22s. Give them to me. Close it. Now, this is how we get out after this. First, give me the keys. Now, we all get out the same side. This one. I get out first. Then you. Stand away from the car. And then you. Let's go. Drop your jackets around your elbows.
Turn around. We're going to open the trunk. Move. Pull your jackets up. You. Open the trunk. Both of you, keep your hands on the lid. Show me the keys. Now get the blankets. You'd never make it. Get the groceries, you. Whose gun is that? Mine. You like to shoot? Yeah. So do I. So I'm warning you, don't try anything smart with me. Move. My name, what's yours? Mine's Gilbert Bowen. He's Roy Collins. What do you do for a living? I'm a draftsman. He runs a garage. That makes you smarter. Or does it? You ought to be all over that windshield. You got lucky, it hit an empty chamber. I had to use it a while back. Now, don't make any more fast moves. I told you the last guy made that mistake. to expect us home when we got there. You got wives, huh? Any kids? I have. Just keep thinking how nice it'll be to see them again. There's the checkpoint. Slow down. No talking. If I give you the word, step on it. good. When I get where I'm going, I think I'll sell it. Where are we going? Pull in the next pump. We'll fill up with gas and get a road map. I got an idea. Pretty good one. Speak English, you. I told you he doesn't understand English. And I don't understand Mexican. Never mind the change. Let's get out of here. Loco. Give me the map. Take the first side road we come to.
Pull up. Keys. All right, now get out like I told you. Yeah, you're the smart guy. Spread the map out on the hood. Get your hands up in the car. Look for a town called Santa Rosalia. How far is it? It's about 500 miles. Is it on the Gulf of California? Yeah. Say anything in there about a ferry across the Gulf? Friday. Not bad. We're loaded with time. We can make that easy. After that, I won't be needing you guys anymore. Well, I guess we won't be having a rabbit for dinner. I wasn't trying. Collins. Put the can out in that rock there. Give me the map. Not that one! The other one! That's it! <laughs> All right, Collins, put the can back on the rock. Don't forget, this is loaded, too. Let's see you try it. See how good you are. Go ahead. Not bad. Collins! Pick up the can! Take it out on that point there. If you don't, I'll let Bowen have it. Out on the point, that's right. Further! Now hold it up. You won't get hurt, your buddy's good with guns. You're crazy, I won't do it. It's just a game. Go ahead. Collins, hold it closer to you. What's the matter? Are you scared? Hold it closer. You want me to try it again? I might miss this time. Shoot. Gil, get going. Nervous? Relax. All right, Collins, come on in. Fun's over. You guys worked up quite a sweat. What do you want? Turn on the radio. Why bother? All you get is Mexican commercials. Never mind. Turn it on. Ama de casa. Si usted hace repostería, o si usted acostumbra... Get something else. Like what? One of those news guys from the States. Harina mexicana. Esta harina está molida especialmente para lograr una masa exquisita. And scheduled for 10 o'clock tomorrow morning at the White House. 
On the crime front, the police of nine western states from Washington in the north to Colorado and Utah in the east have been alerted to keep a continuous search for the Kansas desperado Emmett Myers. Reports have placed the killer in Florida, Detroit and Seattle within the last 24 hours, although most of these tips have been discounted by police authorities. His latest victim, William Johnson, a salesman from Portland, Oregon, was found late yesterday in Imperial County, California. The victim's car, possibly with Myers in it, has not yet been found. The United Nations passed Shut all up. important resolutions by near unanimous... <laughs> They're not even close. You guys don't have to worry. Not yet. You can start sweating when they put me in this car. If they ever do. <laughs> and a good, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Sam Hayes reporting your news final. At the top of the news tonight is the report that the hitchhike murderer, Emmett Myers, is still at large. Yesterday, the devil thumbed another ride, and William Johnson of Portland asked him to hop in. Now, William Johnson is dead. In an all-out effort to apprehend Myers, the police have set up roadblocks on all major highways in the western states. And all border stations are being closely watched. Myers is slight, 28 years of age. He's wearing a dark shirt, dark gray trousers, and a black leather jacket. His right eyelid is partially paralyzed. If you are in possession of any information regarding the whereabouts of this individual, please communicate with your nearest office of police or office of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. If you take one. Get around the car. We camp here tonight. I know what you're thinking, Collins. You haven't got a chance. You guys are gonna die, that's all. Just a question of when. Santa Rosalia, that's the end of the line. If the cops find out we're together, or if you try to cross me up. <laughs> you know, you make pretty good targets from where I sit. Anyway, you couldn't tell if I was awake or asleep. That one bum eye. Won't stay closed. Pretty good, huh? out here and buy some grub. We get out of the car like usual. You guys go in the store ahead of me. No Mexican. I'm talking to you. And he tells you how much you pay. Is that clear? Now, one other thing. 
I'm going to have my hand in my pocket. So far, my record in Mexico clean. I want to keep it that way. Let's go. Buenos dias, senores. Buenos días, señores. Provisiones. Tengo un gran surtido de frutas y legumbres, ropa, calzado, al mismo precio que existen en Tijuana. What do you say about Tijuana? He says their prices are about the same as in Tijuana. Never mind the kid. What do you want? Some beans and stuff. And tomato soup. I like that. Get four cans. He wants four cans of beans, four cans of tomato soup, three cans of chili. It's no use. He doesn't understand English. Well, you're not talking Mex. Take the cans off the shelves. Give them to Collins. I can take some more. Pay him. Quince pesos, diez centavos, señor. Dame una manzana. Dame una manzana. Dame una manzana. Get her away from me. Put the kid down. Let's get out of here. Come on, Collins. Hasta luego, señores. Muchas gracias. Baña usted con Dios. What'd you say to her? You wouldn't understand. What did you say to her? I said, go you with God, little one. Centro. I live there sometime. Yeah. Nice place, huh? Where'd you get the watch, Bowen? My wife gave it to me. Throw it over here. <laughs> Didn't you hear me? I told you to throw it over here. like this once when I was 17. Nobody gave it to me. I took it. Knocked off a broken down jewelry store in a little jerk town outside of Tulsa. It was a cinch. You guys are soft. 
You know what makes you that way? You're up to your necks and I owe you. You suckers. You're scared to get out on your own. You always said it good, so you're soft. Well, not me. Nobody ever gave me anything. So I don't owe nobody. My folks were tough. When I was born, they took one look at this puss of mine and told me to get lost. Well, I didn't need them. I didn't need any of them. Got what I wanted my own way. And you got the know-how and a few bucks in your pocket. You can buy anything or anybody. Especially if you got them at the point of a gun. That really scares them. You ever been at the other end of a gun? No. And I never will. I'm going to listen to the news. Turn it up. We'd like to hear what's going on. You just get the grub ready. Anything interesting, I'll let you know. I gotta find an excuse to raise the hood of the car and put that radio out of commission. First time he finds out they're looking for us together, we're through. Never mind the radio. I'm not gonna take it anymore. We gotta get him. You can't beat him that way. You give him one good reason, and he'll kill us. We gotta take the chance. As long as he needs us, we'll stay alive. When he gets ready to jump us, we'll jump him, not before. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow. They found Johnson's car. They know I'm in Mexico. And they're looking for you, too, in the Chocolate Mountains. Where are the Chocolate Mountains? In Arizona, near home. Not in Mexico? No. <laughs> well, what do you know? That's where you told your wives you were going, huh? And you came to Mexico. What for? Dames? You boys ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Causing all that trouble. Telling lies. They got everybody and his brother looking for you in them mountains. I told you to turn the radio on. I did. Takes time to warm up. Try another station. Throw the tools in the back. The radio remains. 
Remember, make it work. I can't. Pull up. So you did bust it, Collins. Cut it out! He didn't do it. It's a static in the hills. Stations aren't strong enough in the daytime. Tonight it'll work. Tonight it better. Take the wheel. Now, in Punta Prieta, in August the 7th, three Americans stop for provision at a store owned by Jose Andrade. Andrade gave an accurate description of Meyer as being one of them. Another witness stated that three men came out of the store and drove away in a green sedan bearing the same plate. This confirms our theory that Collins and Bowen are with them. He seems to be heading south, all right. Staying clear of all main highways. Exactly. Now, to the west, this is more or less barren and would afford no means of escape. His most logical move would be Santa Rosalia, then Juamas. Well, I sure am glad they fixed that car horn. I'll tell you, after the first couple of seconds, you know, I had to reach for the remote, turn down the volume. Uh, boy, that got to be a little bit annoying. <laughs> and that Mexican w w with his burro coming down the road. Funniest thing, you know, he doesn't stop. There is another human being around for a 10 mile radius, but he doesn't stop. He doesn't even look up at him. Even with a language barrier, he doesn't even at least wave hello. I mean, that's pretty universal. <laughs> I just thought that was the strangest thing. <laughs> Out in the middle of nowhere, two people meet each other, you'd at least wave hello or something. But uh, now, William Tallman, uh, and he's playing the role of the escaped convict here. He was... He played in, in a number of radio and television roles you know, throughout the 50s and 60s, and, uh, but he's probably best remembered for his role. Uh, he played uh, Los Angeles District Attorney Hamilton Berger in the TV series Perry Mason. Uh, Edmund O'Brien, that was also in tonight's picture, uh, he was the son of Irish immigrants. Uh, they came from County Waterford in Ireland, and he had a, an almost 40-year career. And uh, he did win an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor for the 1954 film The Barefoot Contessa. And uh, he was also nominated for the same uh, in 1964 for the film Seven Days in May. Now, uh, Frank Lovejoy, uh, he's playing the role of uh, Bowen here. He appeared in a number of film and television roles, but he was also a voice actor uh, in radio, you know, you know, appearing in radio dramas. Uh, for his filmography, tonight's picture was probably his best remembered role. But in the same year, he also appeared in House of Wax with Vincent Price. So, uh, well, let's get back to The Hitchhiker. Sure that fire's out. Pour the coffee out. Get down! On your feet. Through there. At the other end, lie flat. Get going.
Get a move on. What are you trying to do, wreck it? Drive like I tell you. Trap shut no matter what. I'll be watching. Search for Gilbert Bowen and Roy Collins, now believed to have been last seen with Emmett Myers, mass killer, is being stepped up by the hour. Helicopters are working in shifts, scouring the entire area from El Centro South to the Gulf of California. The planes are maintaining close liaison with the ground, reporting isolated cars and campers. The Mexican police have now joined this strange race against death. ¿No vieron algo en el camino? Sí, señor. Pasamos un carro. ¿Qué marca? Oh, la marca no me acuerdo. Era un sedán verde. Por cierto que tenía una llanta ponchada y dos hombres le estaban arreglando. ¿Dos hombres? Favor de abajarse. Con mucho gusto. Señor Alvarado, creo que estos saben algo. Si le enseñamos la fotografía, posiblemente... ¿Pasaron ustedes dos personas en el camino? Sí, señor. Ninguno de los dos que pasaron se parecía a este. No, honradamente no sabemos, señor. ¿Cómo a cuántos kilómetros de aquí lo pasó usted? Pues verá usted, como a diez kilómetros. ¿Sobre el mismo camino? Por ese mismo camino, señor. Muchas gracias. De nada. Ya se puede venir. Quédese en este crucero. Voy a ver si los alcance. right there. Around. Break the lock. on the pump.
Lo de la gasolina no me importa. Mi perro. Hirieron mi perro. Lo siento mucho, amigo. Vamos a tratar de aclarar esto. Encontré este anillo junto a la pompa de gasolina y tiene una inscripción adentro. Marty and Gilbert Bowen. Mayo 12 del 41. Sí, sí, pronto. Now, as you will notice, when interrogated at the roadblock, the man and his wife were very definite in their statement that they only saw two men. This was below El Arco. There is a point, however, which we feel is of importance. The couple stated that the behavior of the men seemed strange, that they refused to talk to them. Of course, there's a possibility that Myers may seal nearby, covering the two men, which would account for their behavior. We are following through on that possibility. Now, on the assumption that Myers is listening to the car radio, we're issuing these broadcasts in the States, containing false information as to his whereabouts and not connecting the two men with him. We'd appreciate your cooperation and following the same procedure. This ought to be the main highway. It isn't. What do you mean? Looks like an abandoned airstrip. Well, it's okay for tonight. Head over there. No, Ray, you're wrong. You're wrong. It's no use of trying to talk me out of it. Tonight I'm going to chance it. You're out of your mind. I've played it your way long enough. From now on, we're each on our own. It's no good. We've got to stay together. I told you that. I got a break. I'm going to take it. You do whatever you want. I... Cross the runway, those trees. guys are really dumb. Why, you dirty... Oh. Thought I was asleep, huh? You know, you're beginning to get ideas. I don't like that. Hold them in the car. Your buddy's all washed up for the night.
over there. Move. You, Collins, throw a rock down that shaft. Nice and deep. This is fine. Cut it out! If you're gonna kill us, do it and get it over with! Thought you never killed without a reason. Go get the rest of the canned goods out of the car. We'll have a real good meal. Save him for the next guy that picks you up. Anything you say. We interrupt this hour of music to bring you a flash bullet. California and Mexican police officials have abandoned their previously held theory that Emmett Myers is connected with the disappearance of Gilbert Bowen and Roy Collins of El Centro, California. They have been missing since last Sunday night, supposedly on a fishing trip. The police on both sides of the border now feel that Myers is traveling alone and has apparently abandoned his intention of seeking escape by way of Santa Rosalia. <laughs> what do you know? This kind of changes my plans. Looks like you and me are going fishing after all. On your feet. Head for the car. Let's go. We're not going any place. Stand up! What did you do to it? There's a great big hole in that crankcase. All right. We'll walk. Just what that sore ankle of yours needs, Collins. A nice long hike. Now get the fishing gear out of the back. Move. out here alive. Yeah. Cut the gap. Maybe we'll have to leave you here. Too bad. Come on, Roy, try.
Christian! Kill me! Kill me! Come back! Come back! Can't you see he's praying? Stand up, help me step. You know, Collins, you're just about my side. Put you in a black shirt and dark pants with a leather jacket. You look just like Emmett Myers. To anyone who never saw him. Ain't nobody in Santa Rosalia ever saw him. Let's change. Get up in the bank and take your clothes off. Great, doesn't it? You won't be there long. Collins! The cops down there! In those clothes, they might shoot you. And it'd solve all your problems, wouldn't it? Not if they found they made a mistake, it wouldn't. 
We'll hit some little joint in the outskirts. I might even buy you boys a beer. Get moving. Buenas tardes, señores. Buenas tardes. Give us three beers. Yo, yo no hablo inglés. He doesn't speak English. Tres, tres cervezas. Sí, sí. When I want you to talk, Max, I'll tell you. Sit down, Collins. Rest your sore foot. You can talk it now. Ask him about the ferry to Guaymas. I'll be watching his face. If he starts looking frightened, I start shooting. ¿Cuándo sale el chalón para Guaymas? Los martes y viernes a las nueve de la noche. Friday, that's today, and Tuesday at nine o'clock. Ask him where we catch it. ¿Dónde hay poeto embarcar? En el muelle. Pero ahora no pueden embarcarse, porque el mes pasado se quemó y lo están reparando en Guaymas. You're out of luck. Ferry burned up. It's being repaired in Guaymas. You're lying. Ask him if he knows anyone speaks English. Yo no hablo bien español. Uh, no comprendo. Uh, usted no habla inglés. Yo no, pero mi primo José sí. Si venga conmigo. He says he has a cousin who speaks English. Follow him. Up. José, levántate. Despierta. What can I do for you? We want to find out about the ferry to Guamas. You want to go fishing? Too bad. Uh, no ferry anymore for the next two months, maybe. She burned up. Thank you. Fishing is pretty good here, uh, not as good as Guaymas or La Paz, but okay. You have motorboat? You know someone has a boat? Sure, sure. My friend Jaime, he have one. Mm, motor runs good. How do we get to this Jaime? In the mine where he works. Let's go. He's not finished until six. I fix it for you tomorrow morning. I want to go now. At six then. By the time my friend gets the boat ready, there is no sun. My friend does not like using too much boat at night. He he sees his wife and kids Give him some only more. at night. For me? Yeah. Uh, you pay my friend too? Yeah. You be appear at 8.30. Uh, the name of the boat is Estrella. A thousand thanks, senor. Go around the town and wait by the water till it gets dark. Let's go. go fishing when you got a chance. That's what you came down here for, wasn't it? You guys are really fools. If you weren't, one of you would have got away. But you kept thinking about each other, so you missed some chances. You got tired. You slowed down. Now it's pretty late. Yeah, tomorrow I'll be in Guaymas. 
too bad you're not making the whole trip with me. <laughs> That'd be kind of silly, wouldn't it? You stink, Myers. You smell just like your clothes. Sure, you'll make it to Guaymas, but they'll catch up with you and put you out of your misery. You haven't got a chance. You haven't got a thing except that gun. You better hang on to it. Because without it, you're nothing. You're finished. Shut up! Gracias, Carlos. Caramba! Pronto, llámenle a la policía. Este hombre estaba en la cantina de mi primo. Se va esta noche en la estrella, el barco de mi amigo Jaime. No, Carlos, no estoy borracho. Llámenle a la policía. Bueno, bueno. La policía. No, 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 no. La policía. get to take a nice little walk all by yourself down the alley and out on the dock me and bone will follow if you try to tip anyone off or let bone have it you wouldn't want that to happen would you get going under the lights. Thank <laughs> you. 
this way. Do as he tells you, Myers. You're all through. those Mexican cops. I, by the time I got Myers in those handcuffs, I'd have let Bowen have a few minutes with him. Like this, you know, before I drug him away. <laughs> and, but it's this final scene uh, where, okay, it's not a cityscape, but at least it's at night and along the docks. It's this final scene where the film begins to take on that classic noir look. Now, Ida Lupino, who directed tonight's film, uh, she was, uh, she's British by birth, uh, born in London, but she got her American citizenship in 1948. Uh, she was very active uh, from the 1930s through the 1970s uh, in film and television, uh, and was also a, a voice actress in radio. Uh, she would do like radio dramas uh, and variety shows. In fact, that's where I first became aware of her by name was, uh, it was an episode uh, of the radio series Suspense, a 1944 episode called Hugh and C minor, in which she starred with Vincent Price. So both Ida and Frank Lovejoy, th that were in tonight's picture, they have both worked with Vincent Price. I just thought that was kind of a neat note. Um, but she was one of the first few women uh, to become a director in Hollywood. And tonight's picture, uh, its claim to fame, tonight's film, The Hitchhiker, is the only film noir to be directed by a woman during its classic time period, you know, of the 40s through the 50s. Uh, so that is her claim to fame with tonight's film. Uh, she, uh, she, and her then, she and her then husband formed uh, a production company called The Filmmakers. And you may have noticed in the opening credits, that's who produced tonight's picture. Um, but the filmmakers, uh, the studio that they formed, tended, their forte was working with films that dealt with social issues and social topics that the big studios considered taboo and wouldn't touch. Uh, for example, uh, the filmmakers uh, produced the film Outrage which topically it dealt with the issue of rape. 
They also did uh, Not Wanted, which dealt with an unwanted pregnancy, and also the film The Bigamist, which self-explanatory was a guy married to two women. But uh, without a doubt, Ida Lupino, uh, she was a talented uh, actress, screenwriter. I mean, she wrote many screenplays, uh, director. Uh, I mean, she was certainly a lady of her own era and the next one. So to Ida Lupino, I tip my hat. Well, I thank you for spending the evening with Full Moon Matinee. Stay with us as we continue our further investigations into the long-lost evidence of Hollywood. Until next time.